morning. Welcome to the Episcopal Church of the Epiphany on this second Sunday after Easter. In church lore, what is this day called? Low Sunday. Low Sunday. That's right. Not because attendance is lower, which it is. <laughs> Blessings on all of you. It is because the liturgical variety that we do all during Holy Week, we don't do on this Sunday. We return back to sort of a normal Sunday, and so it's called Low Sunday liturgically as opposed to High Sunday liturgically from Easter and whatnot. So there you go, for all that's worth. All right, in our sermon today, we're going to look at the uh, scene with Thomas called Doubting Thomas and see what it has to tell us today. But my question for you to ponder is, what do Walter Cronkite and the Apostle Thomas have in common? Stay tuned.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you on the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for God's word. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, 
because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. For seeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witness. The word of the Lord. We'll read Psalm 16 responsively by whole verse. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. O oh Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now, for a little while, you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in the praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails in my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did not did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. I come to you in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Don't you love those old hymns? They're not too bad for being written in the 6th century. That's apropos of nothing other than our, our worship. It was in 1975... I was a student at the University of Texas. I worked in the co-op, which is the bookstore for the university. And I sold souvenirs, sweatshirts, t-shirts. Banners, I want to tell you some of the things that I made, a little embarrassing. But uh, anyway, I sold souvenirs. I worked in the souvenirs department, and I got a call one day on, on the floor. I picked up the telephone. Uh, this is Neil Michelle. Please hold for Walter Cronkite of New York. Yeah, right. I have friends who pull pranks on me, on whom I had pulled pranks as well. I did not believe it was Walter. I mean, how many times are you going to answer the phone and Walter Cronkite, the most trusted man in the country at the time, would be on the other line? But I held on, and I heard the voice that says, Hello, this is Walter Cronkite in New York. It really was Walter Cronkite. He wanted a a silver stein with the emblem of the university on the front as a graduation present. I did not believe 
it was Walter Cronkite until I heard his voice. I listened to him at 5 o'clock every weekday on the CBS Morning News. I knew that voice. And we have that sort of thing going on in our gospel reading today. Uh, the Sort of the star of our story is Thomas, Thomas the twin. Didymus is the, the, the word for twin, for twin. And in our story today about Thomas, we get that Thomas was a doubter. Now there's more to Thomas than being doubting Thomas, but I do think that Thomas gives dignity to those who doubt, who need to be convinced that the claims of Jesus are true. Because earlier on in the Gospel of John, John tells us that uh, in John chapter 14, uh, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by us. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house were many mansions. And if I go and prepare a, a place for you, I'll come in again and receive you to myself. And Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you're going and how can we know the way? Clue about Thomas. He wants to know more. Tell me more about this, Jesus. And then in John chapter 11, we see that Jesus is going to visit Bethany near Jerusalem and visit Mary and Martha because Lazarus had died. But there was a plot to murder Jesus being fomented in Jerusalem and his disciples warned him not to go. And he said, no, I'm going to go. And Thomas said to the others, let us go with him that we may also die with him. What that tells me about Thomas was Thomas was loyal. He was faithful. And he thought that when Jesus was crucified and died, that was the end of Jesus' movement. He did not have time to complete the task that he had come to do here on this earth. And, John is, and, and Thomas is devastated. He was not with the other disciples when Jesus appeared with them in the upper room. I think he was grieving and didn't want to be around the other disciples because he was so heart-stricken. And you know the story. Jesus appeared to the other, to the other disciples and told them, uh, see my hands and see my side and they, they encouraged Thomas to come to their, their upper room and Thomas said unless I see the holes in his hand and can put my finger in that hole and can put my hand in his side I will not believe have you ever had an experience where something was good, too good to be true I think that was Thomas the, the resurrection of Jesus was too good to be true, and he didn't want to be disappointed again. So Thomas shows up. Jesus shows up. And Jesus, and I think he did this with great affection for Thomas. He said, here are my hands. Put your finger in the hole in my hand. Put your arm in my side. And just that I finally believed that it was Walter Cronkite when I heard his voice, when Thomas saw his hands in his side, all he could say was, my Lord and my God. And Jesus breathed on them, gave them the Holy Spirit. You know the rest of the story. There is a new name in polling 
circles or a new term that has come up in popularity or note over the last several years, and it's the, uh, the number of people who claim they are not affiliated with any faith community. They're called nuns, not monk nuns, but N-O-N-E-S. Are you a part of a faith community? I'm a nun, is what they're saying. I have no faith community. And that number has grown from like 1% in 1972 to where now three, one, three out of every 10, 30 out of every 100 claim to be nuns. They're not a part of any church, synagogue. They're just by themselves, just as Thomas had been by himself while the other disciples were in the upper room and encountered Jesus. And the funny thing is, George Barna conducted a survey a couple of years ago about what unchurched people are looking for in a church. And then he also interviewed pastors and professional church workers about what they thought that people are looking for who don't attend church, what they're looking for in a church. And what they're not looking for, Barna says, are friends. We think, oh yeah, you know, people are looking for friends. We're a warm, loving community. They'll come in and they'll just love us. So they're not looking for that. They're looking for authenticity in Christians. As our epistle reading says, authenticity. So that brings us to the question, imagine that a plane was flying overhead to Addison Cargo Plane, flying overhead to Addison Airport, and it crashed. We were having a large celebration. Let's say we're having a celebration uh, of our feast day. And the plane crashed right smack dab here in the middle of the nave, and we all die in the fire and explosion. The question I ask you is, would we who are part of Epiphany, who are Epiphany, would anybody miss us? Would anybody miss the church, the Episcopal Church of the Epiphany? You know, the funny thing about this, and I, I, I did not realize this, but like 25 years ago when George Brookover was a consultant to the church and, and they were just in the throes of, of agony and despair because they had a rector for 10 years, that it, it, it ended badly. And so the bishop urged them to work with the consultant to discover who they are and who they want to be. And he asked that very question. I didn't know that. He said, if, if Epiphany were, were to disappear, would anybody notice? Because what I believe is when Thomas was waiting to see the Lord, he was convinced that it was Jesus when he saw Jesus' scars. I was convinced of Walter Cronkite when I recognized his voice. And so how I consolidate on that is what the world is looking for, what our community is looking for, what our reach around us is looking for, is they want to see the authentic scars of Jesus in our life. They want to know that we're real. They want us to know that our love, our compassion, is real and authentic 
They want to know that we walk the talk. Would we be missed? I truly believe that we would be missed. I believe that those leaders who answered that question, what would you do if Epiphany were to disappear And he told them they needed to build a church where people would miss us. And I can tell you, I think there are a bunch of people who would miss us. There are a bunch of homeless people in our community and beyond who would miss the food that we provide for them through network that we support network. It came out of the church. The churches in Richardson banded together to say, let's, let's, let's put together our resources for more effectively being able to reach out to those in need and those who are homeless. And we provide not just food, not just financial support, we provide people. The network. They would miss us. I know of a young man named Luna. Some of you know him. You remember Luna? Who would miss us? Because Luna was a, like a 19 or 20 year old, I would call him kid, uh, who lived out of his car and he would come and get vegetables out of our garden and instead of telling him to get away and don't ever do that again our folk gathered him in found out his need put him in contact and took him to a downtown Dallas ministry that could put him in a place where he could get sober, where he could find the Lord, where he could learn to live a new life. And so now Luna is in Georgia. His life has turned around, and he's still there living out this new life. Luna would miss us. A large number of churches in Honduras would miss us. A lot of churches. We've been going to Honduras for 20 years. And we have built churches. We have built parish halls. We have built community room, rooms. Uh, we, uh, we have helped to bring fresh water into a community that, that uh, Breed and I were working on before we uh, came to the Diocese of Dallas. Many, 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 many people in Honduras would miss us. A bunch of Batwa pygmies in Africa would miss us. Uh, we, the church, all together have helped to build and through the uh, Forgot the name of the foundation. Kellerman. Through the Kellerman Foundation, we've helped establish a state of the art medical center and they would miss us as well. They had to move out of the their part of the forest where they were and had to be relocated. This was the church that did that. They would miss us. Some Cambodians, a lot of Cambodians would miss us. I would say probably 40, 50 would miss us because we have helped uh, a group of, of pastors who have labored faithfully there and who have evangelized a goodly number of teenagers and young adult women who are living in a, 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 an apartment home uh, for, 
while they go work in the community away from their homes, their families uh, far away. We are helping them to develop some micro businesses for the pastors so that they are not dependent upon what they can scrounge from the, the area around them, sometimes which is rats. And they can support their families as well as give the overflow to supporting, uh, encouraging these new Christians in their walk in the faith. A number of international students would miss us. They came here, many international students come here to uh, get a degree, whether it's a, a, a bachelor's degree, a master's, or a PhD, and they, we reach out to them and they want to develop as friends. They're looking for friendship, and they find friendship they find families who welcome them in, and many of them have found Jesus as their Savior and, and been baptized and are a part of our common life together. They would miss us. An increasing number of people find us. These are people who have been in a, a, another church or other churches, and those churches wounded them. I mean, all churches do that, even ours. But they found here a place that we don't stop with hurting each other, but that we go the second mile and ask forgiveness of one another. That has created an atmosphere of this being a safe church to be a part of. Several years ago, a young man uh, befriended or was befriended by uh, 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 a couple of our members, and he, he, he said he just has had a bunch of crazy ideas about the Christianity and the church. I mean, he's a pastor's son, but he had pretty much walled himself off from the church until these Epiphanites said, you know, we can't answer any of your questions, but our church is a great place to be. Just come and, come and experience. And so he did. And he came, the Sunday he came, his friends were not there. He said, but the people, I encountered some people in the back, I was on the back row, and they were so warm and friendly. They sat with me, they, they showed me where, where we were, and, uh, and what was going on in the service. They were so kind that I just ended up staying because we were safe. Because we are not God's frozen chosen. But we reach out. Greet people. Get to know them. These are the scars of Jesus that our world is looking for in this day and age. They want an authentic Christianity. They want a safe church where they walk the talk, where the forgiveness that we proclaim Sunday after Sunday is in ourselves because we individually have been forgiven and we know we've been forgiven. And because we have been forgiven, then we can extend grace and forgiveness to other people. And we can welcome a doubting Thomas and say, okay, we're glad you're here. The nuns of this country, 30% are looking for a church that bears the scars of Jesus. How will they know we are authentic 
because just as I needed to hear the voice of Walter Cronkite and recognized it as the real deal, just as Thomas saw Jesus' scars on his hands and on his side, they want to see the scars of Jesus in our lives that are authentic with the love of Jesus. And so let me ask you the question. If you were convicted, if you were accused of being a Christian, how many of your friends could testify that you are? Is there any proof in your life in the way you live outside of our church that you are indeed a Christian? Would there be enough evidence to convict you of that charge? That's what our world is looking for. That's what will change someone from being a nun to being a Thomas who says, my Lord and my God. They're looking for people, ordinary people like you and me, who walk the talk. Where are your scars that are the scars of Jesus to a hungry, thirsting, hurting world that show that you walk the talk? In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will begin to judge and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the People, Form 3, can be found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 387. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons.
We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others, especially Frank Fuller, Terry Van Gundy, Audra Blodgett, Pat Bell, Kathy Williams, Sam and Sharon Ricks, and those we now name. We pray for the repose of the soul of those who have died, especially Russ Motch and Ed Boatman, and those we now name. Let us pray together. Let us join together in the prayer for the election of our rector. Almighty God, giver of every good gift, look graciously on your church, and so guide the minds of those who shall choose a rector for this parish, that we may receive a faithful pastor who will care for your people and equip us for our ministries. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I live with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Turning to page 316 in your prayer book, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We are truly sorry ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. Walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. Again, welcome to the Church of the Epiphany. I'm going to get the worst news out first. Bishop George R. Sumner, our bishop, our Father in God, has seen fit to call Father Ignacio Gama as the interim rector at St. Luke's Episcopal Church in Dallas. This is a great affirmation of his life and his ministry, and I will tell you that I fussed at the bishop about this. <laughs> so much so that he told his candidate of the ordinary that I was not in favor of it. And I had to convince him that while yes, I am mad at him, that I am fully supportive and encouraged that he would call Father Ignacio 
to serve at St. Luke's. He will do a wonderful job, and I couldn't be more proud of him and more affirming of him. And the bishop and I are, have mended our ways, so we're all right. <laughs> so uh, his last Sunday will be May, the weekend of May 14th and 15th. The week before will be the day that we celebrate his departure because on the 14th, uh, that weekend, uh, we have the Anglican evangelist J. John to be here. Mother Betsy invited him a year ago, and so we're going to uh, honor that commitment, and uh, that will be the, the 14th and 15th of May. And his last Sunday then will be the, uh, the 15th. We'll, sell, we'll honor him on the 7th, 14th and 15th, or the 8th, whatever, and uh, then he will be with us our last Sunday on the 15th, and then in two weeks he will, he uh, and Celeste will go to their new calling at St. Luke's. His first Sunday there will be the first Sunday in June in time to preach on the Trinity. Good for you. <laughs> So he goes with our blessing, and we will continue that uh, as well. Uh, let's see. need to run through these real quick. Community dinners are back. Sign up. It's a great time. It's a great time to meet folks that you haven't met before, and so be on the lookout for that. Also, Senior Sunday is May 7th. If you know any seniors that, that, that just assume that, you know them, and that Margaret Kennett does not, then uh, send her an email, give them the name of, of your senior who is either a, a high, graduate from high school, uh, graduating with an AA at a community college, or a bachelor's degree, or a doctoral degree, an advanced degree, uh, let her know so that we can honor them as well. Crawfish boil, get ready this Saturday. Uh, if you want to save five bucks, you go register now. I've got to go right after church to go register uh, so I can save the five dollars. Uh, and uh, But it's next Saturday. Uh, they're still looking for volunteers, so please join us for that. VBS, June uh, 5th through the 9th. Uh, if you want to register your child or children or grandchildren, uh, uh, sign up for that as well. And I think that's all I got. Did I... Did I get it all? So I beseech you, my brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present yourself as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual act of worship. Corey! Oh, it's not Corey. Sorry, sorry, our, our, our guest organist. I did forget something, and I knew I had, but couldn't remember it. Uh, we have a search process going on, and the search committee met yesterday for the first time, and our senior warden, Margie Roach, will tell us about that. My apologies. It takes a village. Um, and uh, by the way, let the good times roll. Everybody sign up and come on out for Crawfish Boil. Um, we did have our first call search committee yesterday morning. Um, and we all met together. Ken and Neil provided us with some information on an advice on discernment process for, for our search committee. Um, we discussed our preliminary plans as we move forward. Will we re soon be reviewing a list of candidates that the um, Bishop and Cannon will be providing to us? And um, with that being said, if you have a thought of someone that you would like us to consider or provide to the, the Bishop and Cannon uh, to look at, please feel free to give it to me. Now would be time to do it um, before we get too far along in the process. Um, also, we will are committing to meet weekly, um, just a little sense of urgency. Um, <laughs> and then um, 
we will uh, we ask you to continue to pray for us, even maybe cutting out the rector's prayer out of this and putting it by your bed, on your refrigerator, wherever you'd like on a daily basis. Um, and then also we will complete the work of the parish profile that the vestry began with y'all's input from the surveys that we, we've been doing. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask us. We'll be as transparent as possible that we can be. And uh, we look forward to serving you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, 
creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he, got, he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever.
And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia.